Welcome back to the LGCT Grand Prix analysis. In this episode, we'll try to unlock some of the secrets of the Grand Prix course of Uyano Vezzani in Cannes. We'll also look at the championship impact of time and faults in the first round. And we will scan the jump off between Doiser and Smith. A jump off that was once again decided in the final line of the LGCT Grand Prix. So there is no time to waste. Let's go. To this Grand Prix, the seventh Grand Prix of the season, two riders sat on the same points on the championship table, both sharing actually the first place. Armand had already a win in Hamburg, so he had the armband as championship leader, but also Peter de Vos in second place had the same points on the championship leaderboard, making it a very interesting first round of the Grand Prix. And to add to that, even Niels Brunsels, sitting in third, had also qualified for the Grand Prix, and he only sat a few points behind Armand and de Vos. Any rail, any fault, any mistake from either three of them could have a big impact halfway the season on the launching Global Champions Tour. And that is why we're going to analyze the first round based on their head-to-head, -head, the head-to-head -head between Peter de Vos and Christian Alman to see what has happened, where it happened and what the impact was on the championship. Let's have a look. This is the comparison between de Vos and Alman. Alman on the left, de Vos on the right. De Vos starts with an inside turn to fence two. Alman wants to secure fence two and goes wide. But remarkably, Christian Alman has got the second fence down very early on course with solid gold Z. And so straight away, a new situation on the championship. At that point, de Vos would be ahead of Christian Alman. Now, it was actually not only Alman who had a fault on that fence, also the number three, Niels Brunsils, he struggled with that upright. Have a look. Brunsils takes the same route as De Vos. Brunsils actually goes quite slow to that upright, reduces the pace from one to two on the inside turn, and finds himself adding a stride and a fraction deep with the Lux van TNL. And with that, he gave room to Christian Alman and to Peter de Vos, mainly to Peter de Vos to, at that point, extend his lead or extend the lead, take the lead and extend it on the championship. So that's the fault at fence two for both Brunsils and Alman. But the Grand Prix, the first round continues with the head to head. It's Alman with the fault. And then they continue to the Oxo. Then there's an inside turn in front of the Liverpool to an interesting line of the triple bar and what walked like a very long five strides or a very short six to a very, very delicate gate. And that's an interesting line to have a closer look at. The line from the triple bar to the gate. If we look at it on the 3D animation, on the 3D map that was made ahead of the Grand Prix, we're talking about this line coming over this oxer, making an inside turn the loop to the triple bar and the straight line to the gate. Now, to start, we walked it as a very long five or a very short six. Question is, how much rideability was there? How much push was there over the, ox, over the triple bar and the rideability to the gate? That would become um, important. Everybody was worried about this fence, about the vertical, that the six strides would drag him short, that the long five would make him flat and lose shape over the delicate gate. But in the end, it played out differently. Have a look at this compilation at some of the faults on uh, that line. We start with Brown Sales, who we just saw having a fault at fence two. Inside turn with the Lux van TNL, and he just clips the back rail. For him, the six get very normal in the end, not even short at all. Here's another look at that fault of Brown Sales on the widest fence on course. Another one who struggled was Angelica Augustson Zalotelli on Kalinka van der Nachtegalle. A very strong horse and Zalotelli was probably thinking that these six would get too short and she only got them just in time. She really had to hold for the six strides. Smolders, on the other hand, came out of the turn very tight. A very tight approach to the triple bar and he also landed on uh, the top rail of that triple bar. And van der Vleuten, he came up with a different plan. Van der Vleuten went for the wide turn to get Beauville straight and then pushed for the back rail but was also faulted. And in the replay you'll see why. 
in the replay, you can see that Deauville, of Beauville jumps from the right to the left. And because of that, the triple bar gets even wider and they get faulted on the back rail of the triple bar. Now, if we go back to um, our course plan, if you go back to the course plan, you'll see that not the faults were made on the vertical, not a single fault on the vertical, but all were made on this triple bar. Now, the question is why? Well, the reason is that they didn't ride with as much power and push over the triple bar as they normally would have wanted because they know that the six strides were short. Five was in the end, no option. I think one or two riders in the end went for the five strides, but most did six. To get the six, you need to have a steep landing, not too much pace, not too much flow into the line, a steep landing so you could get the six early in time. That is also why Van der Vleuten, when he went round to make sure that he could get straight, maybe deep, and then get the steep landing, but for him, that worked out differently. It's also why, um, for example, Angelica Augustson tried to get deep to, uh, to this triple bar, get the slow jump, but it's, of course, this game is being played on the details, on the small margins, and for some, like Brown says, like Augustson, Zanotelli, or like Smolders, they just came short over the triple bar. So that is the line of the triple bar to the vertical on five or on six strides. But we continue with De Vos and Alman in round one of the Grand Prix. Out of the line of the five and six strides, interesting inside turn to a very delicate double, actually. Oxer two strides vertical, lots of faults on the Oxer in that combination. Quickly came up the Liverpool, the green Liverpool, and then a 90 degree turn into the combination. At this point, Alman is getting ahead of Peter.